My name is Torkil uh, Jungklausen. Um, I'm the managing director of the uh, DHI Water Environment and Health in Denmark, Water Policy. And um, I deal with uh, water resources. Um, problems related to water mainly in the developing countries. Also somewhat in my own region in Europe. But for 35 years I've been working mostly in Africa, Asia and Latin America with, uh, with water problems affecting the developing countries because that is where the problems are most serious uh, and where people are most seriously affected by, by poor water management. So I, I started basically as so many people do with a degree in some natural science, hydrology, and drifted into management of water realizing that you, it's not water people who manage water. Water is being, being managed uh, by, uh, in the political system, in the administrative system, and unless you understand how people are dealing with water, uh, you, are, you are likely not to have any impact. So, so my work is very much on how water resources should be dealt with uh, at the local level, in the villages, at the national level, and also in the international level, because almost half of the world's population actually live in river basins that are shared between two or more countries. So water is a, a complicated uh, matter uh, where it's being shared uh, even at the international level, and it's therefore also a political resource. So my whole life, <laughs> professional life, I would say, has been related to water resources and water resources management. Uh, at my um, institute in, in Denmark, uh, we have a center for UNEP. Uh, so we are part of UNEP's, uh, the United Nations Environment Program, uh, and work with the United Nations. We work with other uh, global uh, organizations, like the Global Water Partnership, dealing with water. And in that way, we, we work uh, both at the, you can say, international level where policies and so forth are being defined down to the ground level where people are trying to get water out of a well. Okay, in that whole thing, uh, my work has focused very much on freshwater. And uh, ironically, the, the big message on freshwater has been since the World Summit in Rio now 15 years ago that you cannot manage freshwater unless you, you acknowledge that it is uh, a resource that flows through everything. Water is like the blood of the body. If, if your bloodstream doesn't work, nothing in your body will work. Same thing with water. It is, uh, it is critical for everything we do. We can live without food for several days. We cannot live without water for several days. We cannot get food. We cannot sustain our, our forests, our wetlands uh, without water. So water is, is everywhere in our society. And yet, when you look at the way we are dealing with water, we, we are dealing with water, each one in our own little compartments. You have a ministry for agriculture. You have a ministry for energy, a ministry for water supply. And typically in most countries, and that is both in the south and in the north, they don't talk to each other. So there's a big fragmentation in water, and that has led to a lot of, of uh, mistakes in water management. A lot of dams have been built that should not have been built that way. I want to say that you still need to build dams because a lot of places, a lot of countries get all their water in two months, and how can you say water for the dry season if you don't build dams, but a lot of the wrong dams are built because they were built by engineers who, who did not talk with that society which is depending on the dam. And, and in this issue we are now talking about here and why I'm here is another f major fragmentation and that is that you have a community of people who talk about water, fresh water, and you have another community of people who talk about the oceans and the coasts. And those are two distinctly separate communities. There are 400 people, more than 400 people here in Hanoi. I guess less than five of them have uh, come from the freshwater side. The other 400 come, are marine. And, and vice versa. When I go to freshwater meetings, I go to look very carefully to find anybody with any interest in the coast. And yet, 
the, the 80 percent of all the pollution in the coastal area is generated on the land in, and, and taken by the rivers to that same coast. So <laughs> how, can you, how can you address a problem uh, without addressing the root causes? And how can you address the root causes if you don't talk to each other? And that is the point. We don't. And uh, again, you can say that a lot of the international community, like in the United Nations, is preaching this integration, the holistic thinking, that everything is interlinked. And yet, the United Nations is just as fragmented on this. The coast people in the United Nations, the marine people, do not talk to the freshwater people. So what we try to do here <laughs> in Hanoi is to say, well, dear 400 marine people, um, think about what the freshwater really means to you. Think about what happens, for example, with climate change. The IPCC, the UN's panel on climate change, produced a report just last year on what might happen as a, a result of global warming. Now, some of the very critical issues is that what is likely to happen in most places is that dry areas are getting drier, floods are getting worse, and sea levels are going to rise. So imagine a big city on a coast. In, in the wet season, more water will come to that city. At the same time, does the sea level rise? So it's getting hit from both sides. And in the dry season, it's going to get less water, and yet the sea level is still going up. And so the salt water from the sea is going to penetrate up into the river, into the groundwater, and, and destroy the water supplies. So it's very obvious that there's a very strong link, and you cannot manage that situation unless you address both the coastal aspects of this and the freshwater aspects of this. And so th this is why we at this meeting in Hanoi have a working group to address, I think we call it the linkage between the freshwater and, and the oceans. And that linkage is a river. <laughs> This country is Vietnam. It has, for example, the Mekong Delta. The Mekong River is a good example of this. There are six countries on the Mekong River. It's a large river, and it all ends up in the delta in the southern part of this country. Now, any dam built on that river, anything done on that river, will have an effect in that delta. And maybe some people who are today living uh, and, and having their livelihoods in that delta in a little village relying on the water from the Mekong, maybe in five years, maybe in ten years, maybe even before, that water will be salt most of the time. Partly because of management uh, of, of the river upstream that did not consider them, and maybe partly because the nature, maybe climate change has, has aggravated it. So. Wherever you look, it's very clear that we have to make these linkages, and uh, we are discussing it here. Uh, I hope that we will get, um, I know we will, <laughs> uh, get some messages out of here that, that highlight this linkage, because you cannot competently address the problems of the coast unless you think about all the water that comes to that coast from the, from the hinterland. So basically, I think um, that is a rationale. Now, what I hope will come out of it, well, one tends to, having been a long time in the business, become a little cynical. We are looking at cases. Uh, I was just presenting 15 cases uh, in the working group where we have seen that this has been realized. We have seen that both from Africa, Asia, and Latin America, that uh, organizations have been created to deal with these problems, but it didn't happen. They were not financed, they did not have capacity. Uh, and so the first step is, of course, to realize that you have a problem and to set up some structures to deal with it. But there's a long way be before you can actually make an, an impact. And I think from here, we, we want to raise the awareness of those decision makers that are going to, um, uh, to make those decisions and, and hopefully get some more 
priority both financial and political uh, to, to this very important and overlooked linkage. <laughs>